Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new series of Lawrence Plays, where apparently everything is exploding. So, today I'm going to be starting a Factorio space exploration run. And that's, um, this is one of the bigger mod packs out there, which extends the, sort of the normal Factorio play experience by, after you finish doing all of the stuff on Norvis and launch your rocket, you can then go off to other planets where you need to um, harvest new exotic materials and do all kinds of new science as well. So, to get started with, we've got the um, the normal traditional Factorio start, where you come around, grab some of the basic resources, start doing some burner mining and so on. So this much, this much, So far, so, so much the same as normal. And the first part of the game is very much going to feel normal, because, as I say, it's it's an extension to the game, rather than an actual complete and utter rebuild. The only, there are a few little differences, like there was a big firestorm from space, which has caused all these burn patches across the ground here. But generally, it's very much the same sort of game, uh, in, at least initially. So at the moment, I'm just going around grabbing all of the stuff. So here we go. Here's a list of the uh, the mods I've got. A lot of these are sort of the are the ones that you need for space exploration. Like the AAI stuff is required for a lot of the extra machinery that gets built. The signal transmission is needed later on for communicating between different planets. Alien biomes and the high-res terrain for it makes your different planets look different. So you can have volcano planets, you can have ice planets, you can have purple planets. You can have lots and lots of different ones out there, depending on where you go. And it gives them all a different feel and makes it feel interesting and, and varied. Bottleneck puts these nice little blobs on the corners of the uh, machines I'm using, and those tell me what the machines are up to. So if they're green, like most of these are at the moment, then it means they're running happily. If you see a yellow blob, then they're short of input, so they can't run. And if you see a red blob, sorry, a no, red blob means they're short of input, so they can't run, and a yellow blob means they're, they're clogged up on the output side, so they can't run. So it gives you a very quick indication of how everything's working. Um, got closest first, which is supposed to improve the way the bots behave. So your, your robot should build the closest things to you first, as the name implies, and then work out further out from there, which should make them a little bit more manageable. But to be honest, I've not had the best of luck with that. It doesn't seem to really work quite as it should. Far reach allows you to um, put things in and out. Of, it allows you to basically reach a lot further. So as you can see at the moment, I'm, I'm put, take, putting things in and taking things out of the, the, uh, the, the smelters, even though they're quite a long way away from me. And it basically means that if you can see something, um, you can interact directly with it, rather than having to go up and stand right next to it, which to be honest is just good for my sanity. FNEI uh, stands for Factorio Not Enough Items. This is based on a Minecraft mod with a very, very similar name. And it's basically an encyclopedia, so it allows you to search through recipes much more easily without having to go through all of the uh, all of the details in, in, the, in this interface that I'm using at the moment, so it just makes it much easier. FAL is the fully automated rail layer. As the name implies, it's a system that allows you to put down railway tracks automatically. And it can do a bit more than just railway tracks. It'll allow, it'll allow you to place walls on either side, pole, power poles along them, all that sort of thing. Just whatever, whatever you want to make laying train, uh, train lines a bit easier. Grappling gun, I've never re never really used this very much, but it's supposed to be allow you to, when you accidentally uh, lose grip on your space station and drift off into the distance, you can use that to pull yourself back in again. Um, but you get a jetpack as well, so, you know, who needs that? The Informatron is a, a little thing in the top corner that gives you information and, and plot information about what's going on. It's quite useful. It tells, it tells you um, how to... How, it gives you information on how to do stuff that it extra, it, it, that's new in the mod. So it's basically a help system. Jetpack, as I was saying, allows you to fly around. LTN is the logistics train network. Um, this allows you to... Um, basically treat trains like logistics bots and say, I want you to go here and get this. This, this station is providing with this, this resource. This station is requesting this resource. So it'll automatically then send a train off to one and then over to the other one to, to provide things. Manual inventory sorting keeps things a bit tidier. Um, Oh, actually, a brief aside here. You can see here I'm setting up the, um, the one of the other new AAI machines down here. These are the burner assembly machines and also burner science labs. And so there's a brief burner stage in this game, not quite to the extent of Industrial Revolution, but you get started without electricity by having a science science labs that, that just burn coal and assembly machines that burn coal in order to power themselves, which is quite, which is interesting. It gives you an extra, a little bit of something, something to play with before you actually manage to get power up and running. So, and a, and a way to do research even in the very early, very early times. Robot attrition is another one that's designed to go with space exploration, and that means if you have too many logistics bots in in space or on planets that don't have a good magnetic field uh, um, protecting them from interstellar radiation, your robots will, your logistics bots will sometimes just crash because they've got corrupted by by 
interference essentially and so it's a way to discourage you from using too many bots especially in space which keeps you which i'm quite a fan of um that's part of the reason i follow the recommendation to have this and so it means you can then you, you encourage you to use belts more which i feel is much much more factorio now here you see another change between them um, uh, in, in, in the AAI stuff. We've got these little motors that we're making down there to, before we can make the burner assembly machines. Uh, sorry, the normal assembly machines. Or they, but I can't tell. Um, <clears throat> and this is added in in quite a lot of places for this mod. So lots and lots of different normal machines will require either these little engines or little electric motors to power them as part of the construction process so it adds in a couple of extra steps into the into the way the, the game works into all the recipes and makes things a little bit more interesting there is one other mod that i want to mention that's the vehicle snap one and that um pulls vehicles to with the cardinal directions plus 45 degrees and i think plus the 22 and a half degree ones as well so it makes driving around a bit easier because you're not forever fighting with trying to get the vehicle to go in the right direction so here we go, things are starting to get flowing, going quite nicely. I've got a, a steady supply of coal and iron plates and copper plates coming in. So and at the moment I'm still feeding all the machines by hand, which is the way you tend to start in Factorio, because you need to get some research done in order to get the basic systems you need. But I do have a little bit of automation here. As you can see, I've got the uh, the cogs being fed into the red science production and then being fed automatically into the uh, into the labs. But I haven't got any belts yet because I probably haven't because I haven't researched them. I'm not sure, or just because I don't have the resources to start building them yet. At the bottom, I've also got the same sort of thing for making the um, uh, making the extra mining drills and things as well. So I, I'm getting there with a little bit of the automation. Now this is probably quite a good time to confess that this video is is a bit of a post record because my uh, original recording for this video had really crackly audio for some reason I'm, I'm actually not quite sure why but I decided it rather than um, leave that there because it's getting quite a lot of views because it's the f start of my most popular series I thought it was worth replacing it with one that's got that's slightly cleaner and sounds a bit better so here we go I'm um, researching be um, some some belts now so I can get things going properly. Um, also improving the, science, the rate of make, generating science, so that's, that's nice. Uh, we've got three machines making it now and three labs using it, so hopefully that means it'll be able to keep up with the, uh, with the demand. And at the bottom there, you can see I've now built a, a burner generator, which is um, it's, it's a very simple machine. You put in, you put in coal or, or wood or anything else that you can burn, and it will produce electricity from it. Lovely. Um, and this is needed because in uh, space exploration, because of the, I think again, because of AAI, you need power for offshore pumps, which is a bit mean because it's, it means it's a bit easy. It's rather easy to get into a sort of a, a position where it's very difficult to get out. If, you, if your power fails, you might not have enough water in your uh, boilers to generate electricity. But to be honest, that hasn't actually happened to me. I've obviously been playing Factorio for long enough now that it's, uh, <laughs> that, that that trap at least is one I'm um, I'm reasonably safe from. So that's generating electricity now. As you can see, I've started to use the yellow inserters, which these these ones are a bit better. They don't they don't don't require fueling. They just use electricity. So you've got one place where you provide fuel, and that will then run all of the stuff. So this is getting onto the, the normal early stages of Factorio. Am I starting to build the? Um, no, I think I'm still on the burner um, assembly machines at the moment. Um, so, so yeah, still some way to go before I get onto the actual proper electrical machines. But now I'm starting to build belts, and that's that's great because belts I'm obviously going to need enormous amounts of because this is Factorio. So this is this this is the standard bootstrap. And you'll go through more or less this sort of system any time you start a game of Factorio, where you're just setting up a little cluster of machines that you're feeding by hand in order to make all of the little bits and pieces that you need to get your base started. And here I'm now producing the the little the little motors, which are the yellow ones, and the little electric motors, which is the blue ones. And these, as I said, are required for making lots and lots of different things. Um, and the main difference is that the electric motors require uh, copper cables as well. So, and then you, once you've got the uh, once you've got all those motors and things, you can start you can then start building the better inserters and better better infrastru infrastructure in general, and just get things up and running. And basically, the big push for this episode is going to be trying to get past the burner stage of uh, of, um, of of the game and get on to having. A bit of automation, some belts feeding stuff around, and ideally having everything being then fed by, um, uh, and then and then have everything being powered by electricity. And you never know if things go really well, I might even get a main bus started. So sudden push out with the um, the belts that carry all of the all of the materials out, so I don't have to feed things by hand anymore. At the moment, it's all very much just sort of tangled around itself. I've, I've, I'm doing it spaghetti style, where the uh, the machines get put down, and then you just sort of put the belts in as a bit of an afterthought but I will I, pr I promise I'll tidy this up eventually <laughs>
So yes, so space exploration. It's as I said, the idea of the of space exploration mod is that you can then extend the Factorio game way beyond where it gets to originally. So you, you go off to space, you then start doing rocket space-based science. You then have all kinds of different flavors of science up there. So there's the astro, there's energy, there's material and biological sciences, and you can choose which of those you want to do. And then after that, you get onto the end game sciences, which is the deep space science, which have and again another type of weird exotic material and then that's going to be a, the biggest challenge and so it's, it's, a lot of this a lot of the challenge in this game is going to be in the logistics so moving resources from the place where they're generated whether that's on Norvis up, uh, off to a space station where they're needed or from another planet where they're being dug up and refined and then move them to well to wherever they're needed and there's going to be a lot of that sort of thing so in order to help me with the logistics then I believe there's going to be lots of different types of rockets there's going to be delivery cannons to send materials around the solar system for you and eventually at some point I'm going to start being able to build spaceships and I'm really quite looking forward to that because well spaceships are cool and I think this is going to be very interesting so I hope you're going to stick around for the for the, for the whole series there's, there's going to be lots and lots of it to come um, at the moment as you can see I've got I've now started to get a decent supply of iron, and at this stage of the game, in Factorio, iron is always the shortage, I, I find, always the bottleneck, because you need massive amounts of it for building up all the belts and things you need. All of the early game stuff is very, very iron heavy. Yes, you need some copper and maybe a bit of stone as well, but it's mostly iron. And then interestingly, later on, when you start to make enormous quantities of circuits and things, you tend to find that copper is the one that you need enormous amounts of. But at the moment... The copper is going through at a, at, a, at a gentle dribble, and we're turning most of that into electric motors. But then, as you can see over here, now we're bringing the iron round to be turned into the, to, to to start getting the uh, the belt production a bit more automated. There we go. There's some um, upgrading all the the um, inserters to electric ones. Stick in some power, and then it'll work a bit a bit more quickly. And again, it's a, it's another place where I don't need to worry about power. I've now got underground belts as well, so that gives me a bit more potential for playing around and doing interesting things. But at the moment, it is just just feed it, just trying to keep everything fed and everything powered um, and that's why I want to, to, to get away from my uh, my reliance on on coal powered everything on all the, all the burner machines because it's so easy just to forget to forget to reload them with the with the coal they need and at the moment as you can see at the top right I'm uh, currently developing electric mining so that's going what's well, going and once I've got that then again that's another step another point where I can start forgetting about um, powering it uh, with with the coal and it'll just be powered off that burner generator down there now the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed off in the northeast um, we're starting to get some um, some red splodges appearing on the map those are biter nests those are going to come down and um, express some interest in my base fairly soon I suspect but so yeah I'm gonna it might be time to have a look into some military research but I do want to get mining finished first if I possibly can but I know that the biters they're gonna be a problem sooner or later so the sooner I can get the sooner I can get out there and and, and, and have the military stuff and to deal with them the better and of course at some point I'm going to start needing uh, needing to have um, mining uh, sorry turrets and things to keep them away okay let's pick up some of the uh, remains of the spaceship because i'm sure i can do some, something useful with them oh here we go here's the military research coming through nice and quickly and now i can build those electric mining drills i was waiting for well i say i can build them i i haven't really got the resources for it but at some point i'll be able to build them <laughs> and that'll make things a lot quicker here we go so i'm now starting to spec out the um the initial parts of my main bus so we've got a few belts there those can carry the first few resources i need and we'll see how that goes building a machine gun is also very useful for defending myself oh here come the first, here come the biters and oh yep i have just about managed to um to wipe them out so that's a good start <laughs> oh dear but a submachine gun will make that a lot easier for the next one at least at the moment they're still just the small uh, flurries of biters and there's always quite a lot of useful stuff in the ship let's um yeah turn that into uh start using that for the for the base um <clears throat> and yes i can start um producing the the uh, the belts down there once i've got a decent supply of them i can start making the bus Okay, and we're going to start making turrets as well now because that's part of the military. Oh no, I can start researching turrets, sorry, because that's part of the part of the military. The submachine gun will, yeah, allows me to rip through the biters without too much difficulty. Although I have now used virtually all of my ammunition, so let's try and make that. Let's try and make the ammunition a bit stronger because I don't think I'm quite ready to take on that biter nest just yet. It's still a bit, a bit beyond me, and I've used up all of my iron making the ammunition that I've just then ripped through at a heck of a rate to just try and deal with the biters. So, yeah, some of the um, weapons and things. The shotgun requires me to make requires some, some wood because it's a traditional shotgun with a wooden stock. Um, grab some of that. I can make a shotgun. Shotguns are quite nice because at short range they can be really devastating against the biters. So I'm going to give that a shot. We'll see how it goes. Um, I wouldn't like to say for sure whether it's going to be um, 
or the re how well it's going to work. But uh, I know there's a reason I normally go with the machine guns, but it's always fun to try something new. So let's try with the using the machine gun to yes, yeah, the machine gun's good for ripping through the uh, the individual biters, but maybe the shotgun will be a bit better for the uh, for the nests themselves. Um, or maybe I'm just going to get my face eaten. <laughs> we shall see how this goes. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm at that point now. The funny thing, ooh, standing in the goo and dead. Well, it was going, I was going to say it was going fairly well, but I'm at that awkward stage of the game where um, the biters are kind of tough, but the um, but uh, compared, to, compared to the weaponry I've got, and the nests especially so, because the nests never get any tougher, but the biters do. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this run, uh, for this episode. So I hope you'll come along back and join me next time when I'll have another go at the um, the Biter Scourge and sorting out the bug where um, long, uh, long Reach forgets how far you can reach when you um, when you die. It's very unhelpful. Um, so once I've, yeah, once I've got to, yeah, the once I've got the um, those biters dealt with, I think I can start to extend the bus out that way, and then well, we'll see how it goes from there. So. Thank you for joining me. As I said, this is a, a, uh, a remaster, so there's there's five series worth of space exploration for you to explore. I hope you'll um, enjoy all of it, and uh, and when you get caught up, say, send me a message, say hi, or drop a message on any of these videos if you want. I look forward to seeing you in the, for the rest of the series, then. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.